just gonna take both of these lanes because they're mine. So we're going to the 1800 block of LaSalle for somebody who passed out. From a pass out, it could be a million things. It could be cardiac arrhythmia, low blood pressure, overdose. Dehydration, anxiety. Somebody found Jesus. Someone passing out could be a million and one things, but it's definitely your body's way of saying something's going on and I don't like it, so I'm going to reboot. Oh, look, right here. Yeah, a little flagger. I mean, was this at a church? Oh, maybe they did find Jesus. 3232, we're on scene. 19.1. What happened? I just sitting there and started feeling bad. Okay. So All of a sudden? Yeah, that's all I'm going to Okay. All right, what kind of medical problems do you have? I have blood pressure. Okay. You have any heart problems other than high blood pressure? Yes, I don't. Know. Okay. She was not responsive. Okay. So I had down that she did bomb. Okay. Would you mind if we took you in the ambulance to do a few more things? Stretch. Okay. okay. I want to rule out a heart attack immediately. Men always have chest pain, for the most part, whenever they're having a heart attack. And women are weird, just to put it bluntly. You know, they often have what they would describe as indigestion or even just abdominal pain, maybe, or something as simple as a pass out episode. All right, so I'm going to put a bunch of stickers around your left breast. We're going to take a picture of your heart, OK? Anybody ever told you having a regular heartbeat, sweetheart? Yeah. OK. You take medicine for that? OK. Anybody ever told you you got a block in your heart? No. OK. I need you to try to hold as still as you can for me. It's very important. We're going to take a picture of your heart, OK? All right, real still starting now. We want to quickly get an EKG done, a 12-lead EKG that gives us a, a picture of you know, all sides of our heart. And we can see if there's any um, lack of oxygen or ischemia there that's you know, causing a heart attack. She's got a lot of, um, got a lot of depression. Or... Inversion, I would say that's inversion. T-wave inversion is just, you know, a cardiac anomaly. It's not a significant indicator of a, a cardiac event. 18. 23. You feel like you need to throw up again? You can give her a bag, huh? Just sit you up. Can I can give you this bag? There you go. I'm trying to see what color that is. It looks like, it looks like food. Maybe you had rice? Uh, no, 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 no. All right. You're not alerted to anything, right? We're going to give you some medicine to stop the vomiting, OK? Did the throwing up make your stomach feel better? Just give it a few minutes to work. OK. All right, Tora? Yeah. 3232, can you put us around to Toro, please? Are you having any pain now? OK, good. My well, baby, it looks like you might just have good old-fashioned food poisoning. And sometimes when you throw up, you have a, what's called a vagal response. It'll make you kind of pass out, you know? Which kind of goes hand in hand with what you're going through, it looks like. Everything else looks OK. Hopefully, that's all it is. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure the Lord understand in this way. My husband been chewed enough. Mm, 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 mm. Uh-oh. Ah. <laughs> ah. I don't know why mine went up a little big. You gotta work at it. I'm on the struggle bus right now. What's she got? I'm, I'm on have the more struggle gum bus. In my beard than I'm gonna have in my mouth. Mm. You're gonna be Captain Gumbeard tonight. I know. Aboard the struggle bus. We get a call for a two-year-old that the parents noticed some um, swelling. She has some hives, so possibly having an allergic reaction. Hi. What's going on? She on the eight, uh, noodles. She ate some noodles. Like, uh, shrimp. Yeah. The shrimp. She might be allergic to shrimp. We We're going to take her to the hospital, TV. OK? She's got a little bit of swelling under her eyes, and I can see some hives and redness on her skin. So I would call it, you know, an allergic reaction, definitely. I'm just warning you. Sadly, we're about to make her cry. Because we're gonna have to start an IV on her and give her some Fanagril. 
You want to sit? Let me you slide right sit. over there, baby. Allergic reactions and children are scary. Can I see this arm? Oh. I know peanuts and shellfish both can cause anaphylaxis very quickly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What is this? Yeah, I know, it's it? wet. You see that? Wet. Yeah. You're terrible uh -huh. at distracting. Uh -huh. Watch that. Water treats food. Water treats food. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I know it. I'm it's so okay. sorry. That's it. No more. That's it. I'm Done. so sorry. I'm not her friend anymore. <laughs> she ever had shrimp before? Yeah. She had shrimp. Oh. You want to sit in a big girl chair? Allergic reactions are so weird. You can have that first initial one put you in anaphylaxis, and you can die from it. Let's go um, one to two milligrams per kilogram. Or you could be one of those people where you have that mild reaction first, and then if you come into contact with it again, it's a little more severe and then more severe, until eventually, if you come into contact with it, it'll cause you anaphylaxis. Let me see. Eyes not going to hurt, I promise. That's it. No more. It's okay, Bobo. You all right? Yeah, it's actually common for the throat to itch a little bit right afterwards. Plus, be her being upset. She'll pass in just like two seconds. I saw that screaming. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. I gave her the Benadryl, and you know, she started to vomit a little bit, which is fine. That's a normal side effect, especially for kids. It's okay. It's okay. 32, 34, go ahead. Still, you know, watching this cute little baby vomit and, and get a little shaky from the Benadryl, it makes you a little bit sad to be the bad guy. It does. You want to hold it for a second? Would that make you feel better? OK. And look, she might get a little tired, too, OK? Yeah, she's going to be super normal, sleepy. So she might actually even go to sleep, all right? Anytime we get, you know, such a sweet, you know, pediatric patient, it's like a little break. What kind of birthday party is she having? Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Your skin looks better already. You're going to be perfect for your party tomorrow. You're welcome. You know, you're, you're dealing with grumpy adults or very sick adults. And so to get, you know, that little breath of, of fresh air and to just have the chance to laugh with a child and, you know, play with them a little bit and things like that, it, it's definitely a break in the night. Why are you so cute? City of New Orleans, 911, what's the address of the emergency? Yeah, um, I have a friend over here. We're under the bridge. I think he's having a heart attack. So your friend might be having a heart attack? Yeah, he about fell. He's sitting here holding his chest. He doesn't look good. Okay, is he, he having chills or sweats? Yeah, he does. Feel warm. Okay, man, we're going to get all some right. help out to you guys as soon as we can over here. Okay. All right, all right. All right, bye-bye. Going to the elderly male that got some chest pain. Sound like them classic signs to me. Gripping that chest, excruciating pain. Look, if he's sweating and it's this cold out here. Oh, yeah, you know it's something. You know it's something. You don't sweat when it's just cool unless you're working out. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know nothing about that today. I know, I know. We're going to get him right, though, man. We're going to get him right. We're going to fix him up like we always do, and we're going to dip on out to the hospital. You definitely find yourself on the front line for health care for the homeless population. You know, you want to give that 100% because to have somebody in your corner can mean the difference in the world to that person. 3215, I'll see you. Woo. How you doing, buddy? Your chest was hurting? A little bit. Is it still bit. hurting? Well, my pulse rate is kind of rapid. All right, let me see you now. Let me just see your arm, my man. I think it's what it is. The mixture is my, my Cajun seasoning. Yeah. Plus, I drank a little beer. Uh huh. And I had that baked chicken. Okay. And I think that was a combined. Hang on a minute. What's wrong? I'm trying to breathe in Just relax. Take some slow deep breaths on me, okay? All right. Look at me. Uh, yeah, take some slow deep breaths, okay? He's really putting it on the spicy food that he's eating. However, I immediately get a radio pulse on the patient. His heart rate is extremely fast. With the chest discomfort and shortness of breath, it's definitely raising red flags that this could be a true cardiac event. We know we need to get that initial EKG on the patient. So your heart rate is above 150. Is it, so, is it, it looks like he's in a rhythm, what we call SVT, OK? What is that? It's a supraventricular rhythm. The, uh, what means is your heart is beating too fast in the upper part of it, OK? 
this we big. Yeah, I'm gonna get you on the stretch. I'm gonna start an IV and get you some meds. All right, my man, we gonna get you right here on the stretch, okay? Get you on that stretch and get started, all right? How you feel standing up? Thank y'all so much, this fellas. Right Appreciate now, it, man. Okay. And look, when you go to sit down, spin around that way, okay? To, to me, like we're dancing. I know Emily gonna be mad at you. No, they close the neighborhood now. <laughs> I love you, honey. I will. She, he said he loved you. Mr. Jeffrey, we're getting ready to give you a medication called adenosine. Let me see this one, buddy. Adenosine. But that should definitely help you out, all right? All right. We had to give him an antiarrhythmic medication called adenosine. It'll slowly slow that heart rate down to where it stops and then it restarts. It's basically just shocking the heart. All right, buddy, you ready? Yeah, here we go. Hold my hand. Hold real still, OK? It's going to feel like a horse is going to kick you in the chest, all right? It's about to hit you, all right? Just go ahead and relax. Take some deep breaths from me, OK? On three. On three, OK? One, two, three. Squeeze it. How you feeling? On here, print? It's kicking a little. It's kicking a little. Oh, I saw it. We saw it. Hit it back again. Hit it back again. We just administered a denison to this patient in hopes to restart their heart, which has been in a lethal rhythm. It's the patient's best chance at staying alive. You still got that chest pain? No. Doesn't this go on too? Pretty much. Good, good, good. The medicine worked, so I got to get you to relax a little bit so your heart rate could finish coming down some more, OK? All right. Just go ahead and relax. Even if you got to lay back a little bit and try to take a little nap, we got you, all right? All right, young man. <laughs> All right, Mr. Jeff, we about to roll. Yeah. Hey. What's up? Ask me a question. What's that? Seriously, I definitely did the right thing. Call me out. Absolutely. Like, no lie, you absolutely did the right thing, my man. What would have happened if I didn't? What, so if you didn't, what could have happened? Your heart rate could have stayed that high and got even higher, and it could have sent you in what we call a ventricular rhythm, OK? which is when the top part of your heart is not contracting at all, it's only your bottom part of your heart. And that could definitely be lethal and fatal, all right? In other words, I could have kicked the bucket. Hey, you, there you go. You could have kicked the bucket, my man. This patient could have easily, you know, passed it off as, I'm fine, it's just the food, I don't want anything done, and he could have died. We was able to get him to a place to where he can get that definitive care. But like you said, you called at the right time. So we ain't mad, all right? Ain't nobody I'm, mad. I'm not mad. I'm glad. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad the sandwich bag. Look, you kept your bucket up right. <laughs> you kept your bucket up right, big dog. We get a call for a 24-year-old male having a first-time seizure. Another seizure case tonight? When the sun comes up, man, it's like I wake up and I'm good. But then, you know, towards the end of the day is when it'll hit me. I know you can't go right to sleep. So you watch, like, sit down and watch TV, or do you just? TV watches me. You're one of those, I need to wind down, people. Yep. Whereas I've fallen asleep twice during this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Rescue 13 by. Was he in the shower or something? No. That sweaty, huh? What's going on? He had a seizure. Does he have seizures? No, I don't have seizures. Never had a seizure before? Just had one in the room. Can you describe what you saw? No, I ain't seen that. I was laying in the room. Mm -hmm. He grabbed me, and mm -hmm. like his stomach hurt. And then like his arms and legs just got real stiff. Right. And his mouth was locked down, and he was having a seizure. Yeah, I'm going to just check your pulse, man. Your heart rate's going fast, too, buddy. You're at like 140 beats per minute. Blood pressure's up. You know, you didn't smoke any spice or anything like that? No, sir. Any other stuff? No, sir. You mind if I talk to him for a second without you guys, yeah. right? Hey, brother. I'm not the cops. I just need to know, because I can't leave you alone or anything like that. Did you do and you got any other drugs, even if it's just smoked no, a little sir. weed or anything like that? No, sir. I only ask because, you know, if you're going to overdose on something, I, I you know, I want to be able to fix you. So if I don't know what it is, I can't help. A four loco. Oh, old school four loco or the new yeah, kind? Same one. The new kind that's 14% stroke. Did you chug it or what? 
Yeah, I chugged it real fast. You only have one? Yes, sir, one. Poor Loco has 14% alcoholic content. Definitely not something people should be chugging. Yeah, I wouldn't chug the four locos, bum. Get the IV, we can get it. Small poke. Oh. Be over in two seconds. Plug that up. My man's gonna start a, an IV on your right arm there. He's oh, poor. Right. All done. Yeah. Flush it out yeah, of there, huh? Drinking thins the blood, so it makes starting an IV hard because it's just gonna make it bleed more. Let's get him on over there. You chugged it, got sick, and then that happened. I've been chugging it for about three hours. Chugging it for three hours. Yes, sir. It take me a long time to drink it. I sit and rest up probably every day for like a couple of years. Yeah. I always threw up off the front. Yeah, you I look bad. Sweat bad. Up like that. Yeah. Huh. It's just the first time somebody said I had a sick time. Obviously, your body doesn't like it. Who monitored his vitals and actually everything was fine? I just think he has a severe reaction when it comes to this one alcoholic beverage and it makes him throw up and his blood pressure fall and have what looks like a seizure. He kept saying he chugged the four loco and I said, you so you chugged the whole thing? He goes, no, I drink about that much. He goes, I sip on it for three hours. Like, yeah. Like, so you just drank a four loco over three hours. You didn't chug it. Did you see the vomit in his hair? I didn't look at it that long. When I just I saw it. When I went to go get the laptop back and uh -huh. I rested my arm on it. <laughs> So did you wash your hand? Not yet. What arm are we talking about? The one you have rested right there on? Uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> City of New Orleans, 911. What is your emergency? They said that she swallowed something. And it's caught in the door and I don't want to go down. And is she choking? She's trying to make it throw up, but she can't talk. OK, so she's choking. She, she said that she can't breathe. I'm sending a paramedic to help you now. Stay on the line with me. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Do not slap her back, OK? Alpha 3247, prepare to copy a code 3 in the second for a 70-year-old female that's choking. I feel like choking calls can go one of two ways. You get there and the patient's perfectly fine. Or like you get there and they're like legitimately like choking. So we are going to a 70 year old female that is choking and Lindsay and Jeanette just got on scene. They're like the female super troopers. Goofy yet effective. She said she's trying to, she said something in her throat. Hi, babe. Come on, bro. Okay, okay. Okay, listen. Listen. If you cry, it's going to make it harder. So just, you're still breathing, okay? What did you, you were, a oh, vitamin, okay. It was a big one, and you just feel like it's kind of stuck there? <laughs> Look, let's get you out of here, okay? She is gagging, she's coughing, and that's actually a good thing, because, okay, whatever this is, it's not blocking her airway. But now, our patient is extremely emotional. How are we going to help her calm down so that the pill can pass on its own? All right, baby, we're gonna sit your butt. We're gonna sit you up straight. Do you typically have any problems with your throat or swallowing? <laughs> okay. Do you feel like you're trying to cough it up or is it making you cough? I'm trying to even choke. It's got my breath. Okay. Like a little insult. I mean, her heart rate's like in the 160s, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any cardiac problems, baby? Yeah. Yeah? She is so worked up and so frantic and so stressed because of the discomfort that her heart rate's just skyrocketing. And something as simple as stress and her heart rate being that high, especially with a cardiac history, it can actually cause damage if we don't address that issue right then and there. How would you feel about us giving you a little bit of medicine to help you calm down? You feel like that would help you? All right, baby, you're gonna feel a little pinch over here, okay? Don't move. 
One, two, three. Uh, <laughs> Baby, I want you to just try to calm oh, down, okay? Oh. That's it. It's over. You are breathing. You are okay. We're gonna get. We're gonna take good care of you, all right? Thank you. Baby. No problem. Are you starting to feel a little more relaxed? Yeah, to death. buckle her in, and then we'll head out. Versed is a sedative, and immediately. She starts calming down. Her heart rate starts coming down. They're just going to put some seatbelts on you, OK? Part of the reason, you know, I love being a supervisor is just raising the younger generation and watching them grow as clinicians and as people and as employees. Being Lindsay's FTO, I've seen her grow exponentially over the years from this brand new medic to actually just being, you know, a boss ass 911 provider. Baby, <laughs> I drink some water. I might not have to go to the hospital. <laughs> We're already on our way, sweetheart. We're already on our way. So we'll go to the hospital. They can like make it sure. Going down. Good. But they can also make sure that it didn't go anywhere where it wasn't supposed to, oh, like into your lungs sure. and stuff. Doing a fantastic job. Good. But I just know I'm going to see the next day. Look, yes, you are. You only got a few hours till that sun comes up. <laughs> and I'll be up to uh, It's gone. It's gone good, good. City of New Orleans, 911, what's the emergency? They got to have some poisoning. Can't stop vomiting, um, but I don't have nothing in my body. And I'm having trouble breathing. Oh, God, please help me. Help is on the way. Alright, little brother, we got somebody having shortness of breath, a 39-year-old female. You know, the patient is a diabetic and also has fibromyalgia, bro. Ooh, that sucks. We gotta be real sensitive with it, you know. Just that pain tolerance is gonna be terrible. Those real severe muscle aches and tenderness, you know. Right. It's just sometimes it's unbearable for the patient. Right. She's gonna have to see sensitive and comforting Shaq and Jay this time, <laughs> you know. You no know one seen. All right. Should I get a get grab an Emerson's bag real quick? She vomiting? Yes, a lot. Didn't have much to eat. What? Um... Check that sugar game was 30. What about 302? 302. You having any stomach pain, babe? <laughs> Does it hurt worse when you breathe or when you vomit? Let me see this on, baby. The patient, she has that sick look. She's clammy, she's diaphoretic, and her blood sugar over 300 is extremely high. So her presentation is throwing up red flags for us. On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your pain, baby? All right. Sit back a little bit, baby. Let me get the rest of these stickers on you, all right? Fibromyalgia could definitely hide what the actual cause of her extreme pain might be. Maybe she's just having an episode of food poisoning. Maybe it is a more severe diabetic event. We need to try our best to look over the fibromyalgia pain and treat the other symptoms. So we want to get fluid started and we want to rush her to the hospital. How long you been feeling like this for? All right. I got you, baby. I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> Oh, God. All right, love. Let me see this on, baby. Okay. When you got off the plane today? At 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. No, all right. I thought. She's thinking ringer. Something bad on my stomach. Uh, let's get a temp. <coughs> Let me try and get a temp on you real quick. Under your tongue? Mm. No temp. It hurts so bad. Oh, God. <laughs> Being that this patient doesn't have a fever or even a low-grade temp, that's telling us it's not some type of infection in the stomach. So that raises some big concerns that this could be diabetic complications, which is 100% a life-threatening issue. Oh, oh, my stomach. Help me hurt. Yeah, baby. I know. <laughs> Uh-huh. And you could, huh? Abdominal pain calls are so broad. There can be so many different things. Adding that on top of her diabetic issues, 
than fibromyalgia, there's something more seriously going wrong other than just food poisoning or the stomach bug. We need to figure out what it is. No possibility of pregnancy? All right, good, good. You don't have anything like endometriosis or anything like that, huh? No. All right, baby. Please, don't get my stomach. We about to leave. We about to leave. We about to leave in a second, second baby. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give you something for the nausea first, okay, babe? All right, you about to you about to get some yeah, medication, some Zofran, all right? Yeah, baby. All right, baby. We gonna get you that to the hospital, okay? Oh, well, look. I got it right there for you. I know, baby. We're gonna just keep it like that for right now, okay? And you say that pain is a 9 out of 10 right now, huh, babe? She's breathing so fast because she's in distress. You can tell she's hurting. We want to give her some pain medicine, some fit now, to try to help her become a little more comfortable. So deep breath on me, okay, baby? Any relief with that pain yet? Okay. Try to take some slow deep breaths on me, okay? I'm just feeling your stomach, okay, baby? Have you been having, like, increased thirst a little bit? You have been peeing a, a little bit more, too? No. What's your blood sugar normally runs, my love? High 100s? All right. Her blood sugar is over 300. That could be an early sign of BKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. It is definitely very dangerous for diabetic patients. They have the abdominal pain. They have the nausea, the vomiting. Their metabolic state is all over, and their body's trying to get back to a normal. Look, just keep talking to me, and you'll be OK, all right? OK. OK? All right, baby? We almost at the hospital. We almost that we not far out, okay? City of New Orleans, 911. What's your emergency? We have someone choking. We're giving him the Heimlich. We need someone out here immediately. Okay, and do we know what he's choking on? <laughs> uh, he's a beast. Tell me, is he able to breathe at all? No, he's losing consciousness. He's not able to stand up okay. anymore. All right, I have fire and EMS en route to you, OK? He's blue, ma'am. He's blue. He's throwing at the mouth, and he's blue. Can you turn him on his side? Ma'am, we need help immediately. Listen to me. We need to do the Heimlich maneuver again, ma'am. You're going to put your arms around his waist and make a fist for me. Arms around his waist. Grab him with the other hand above the belly button. Jerk really hard, and it's a quick motion up into his stomach. Up into his stomach. And I keep doing that until he can breathe, talk, or cry. As hard as you can. As hard as you can. You're going to have to keep going until they arrive. Please, please, please. Ma'am, he's blue. He's blue. All right, ma'am, they're in route to you. I am headed to a person that was initially choking on a piece of meat and then went unresponsive and stopped breathing. So this sounds like a full airway obstruction, which can very rapidly then progress into respiratory and cardiac arrest. If it is a full obstruction, especially with food, we can try to, you know, pull it out of their throat, see if we can ventilate them to the point where they start responding again and breathing. This is one of those true life or death moments where every second matters because there are two things that are happening. Number one, he's not getting any oxygen to his brain and to his organs. And number two, his heart's gonna stop. Right here? Oh, yeah, he sure Okay, 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 we're gonna help him. On scene. No, 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 don't do the Heimlich. You can stop, don't do the Heimlich. We're gonna get him. Once a patient reaches the level of being unresponsive, they cannot support themselves in an upright position, and so the Heimlich maneuver is not appropriate anymore for this patient. Do y'all know what he's choking on? Hurry up and get the tracker. Get out of the way. Hey, don't go get him on the tracker. Let's go. Get everything off. Get his legs. Come on, guys. Come on. Everyone relax. Okay. You ready? Yeah, what? He's at Hagenal right now. 
I am responding to a call for a male that is choking on a piece of steak. While choking, this patient started to panic, which is how he maybe ended up outside. He is unresponsive, purple from head to toe, and barely breathing. This guy has a full airway obstruction. Grab the airway roll if you can get the skills. Uh, All right, buddy. We got All right, we, we got, got you, man. Got I know, I know. We got uh, The first thing that I do is grab our video laryngoscope and the McGill forceps. So in being able to visualize what is in his throat, I can come in with the forceps, grab it, and pull it out manually. Oh, let go, buddy. Let go. There we go. Hold on, hold on. OK. Oh, good, good, good. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Sit up. Hey, man. He's still got a large chunk of it in there. <laughs> Spit? There we go. <laughs> Can you speak to us? Tell us your name. There you go. All right. Can we try to put that oxygen mask on you for a minute, bud? All right. Just take some deep breaths for now. It's, and you're also going to feel some swelling and some things like that. So don't want you to keep coughing if we can't get anything up, all right? He's able to talk to us, but he doesn't really know what happened. He doesn't realize he just almost died. Oh, you were blue, You were purple, yeah. so good. I would, um, if this is what he's going to do. I'm just going to go for like. Yeah, I would go to the hospital just because he's going to have some airway swelling. They may want to just tube him. Is that your family out there, buddy? I'm going to go let them know just since they're, since they're so freaked. What? Hey, guys. So we have the piece out. He's up. He's breathing on his own, okay? Um. We're gonna, of course, transport him to the hospital because I do still, there is still a piece in there, but he is up, he's breathing on his own, and he's aware. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can look at him for a second. They just wanna look at him for a second, but we still have a lot to do, okay? His outcome should be phenomenal. Without our intervention, this person could have very much been deceased. 6249, you can show me clear. So 3244, code three to university with one patient. Yeah, that was a bad one. That dude almost died in front of him. I just pulled a whole piece of steak out of your mouth. That's a sexy fate. That's a sexy That dude's got to be so thankful. Safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Oh. Oh. They're not dead. I can work with that.